Johnny Ive led Apple's secretive design group to make products like the iPhone that truly changed the world. Here's how he got there. Hello, I'm William Gallagher from Apple Insider. Apple's chief designer, Johnny Ive, is leaving the company to form a small studio that will have Apple as a client. And 27 years ago, after he graduated what is now the University of Northumbria in Newcastle, he worked for Tangerine, which was a small design studio that had Apple as a client. But before he joined Tangerine, he did spend some weeks visiting America, where he met designer Robert Brunner, who was then, almost immediately, hired by Apple. It took time for Brunner to then persuade Ive to leave the UK, but when he did, when he joined Apple in 1992, Johnny Ive was given the job of completely redesigning the Newton message pad. He did it in weeks, making models, prototypes, but also concentrating on exactly how people use the Newton device, how they felt about using it. Consequently, Johnny Ive made a great Newton message pad 110 but the Newton range was failing, Apple was falling, and Ive was soon looking to leave. Until Steve Jobs returned. Then, while Johnny Ive and his colleagues were already creating the 20th anniversary Mac, Jobs wanted something completely different. He wanted the iMac. Launched in 1998, the iMac was the computer that changed everything. It validated Steve Jobs' return from Next. It showed that design mattered, that Apple's and Johnny Ives' attention to detail pays off. So then Ive totally abandoned it. Reportedly, he was at Steve Jobs' house when he saw a sunflower in the garden. And the result was the 2002 iMac G4 with its swivel head and the computer in the base. Throughout his career at Apple, Ive has always been willing to ditch one idea, even if he'd first had to fight for it whenever a better one came along. Consequently, he soon ditched the Swivel iMac too, replacing it with the first version of the iMac as we know it today. Johnny Ive's design group would do the same thing with the iPhone, which from 2007, almost every year, went through dramatic changes, both physically in the hardware and then from 2012 also in the iOS software. By the 2010s Johnny Ive was also designing outside of Apple and one of the items he individually created for charity was a luxury watch. Much more so than Tim Cook, much more so than even Steve Jobs, it was Johnny Ive who liked luxury watches and we've seen how Apple's design for one became the best-selling watch in the world. We've also seen, though, how Apple dropped its initially hugely expensive versions of the Apple Watch in favour of ones focused less on fashion and, and more on health. If I were disappointed at that, then he was probably more unhappy with the fate of one of his other designs. For Johnny, Ive was so keen on Apple making a self-driving car that, as he always did, he built a prototype to show the idea. We don't know how basic a mock-up it was, but we do now know that Johnny Ive's car design for Apple didn't feature a steering wheel. We haven't seen that design, and we haven't seen whatever Apple is currently planning for its cars, but we have seen Ive's last project. The final project that Steve Jobs worked on turns out to be the same final project that Johnny Ive has seen to completion. And it's also the biggest. Johnny Ive designed the Apple Park campus. He's just not going to work in it, not for very much longer. What do you think about Johnny Ive leaving? Is he a huge loss or was it time for him to go? Let us know in the comments. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see and follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.